ladies and gentlemen, boys, girls, people of all ages, welcome to another episode of the Tyler Bryan Hour, aka TBH, aka TB Hour, episode 31. Feels good to make it to episode 31. I am your co host, B Heard, aka Brian, aka Prince, aka Prince with you about that. And I'm passing live and oop it to my brother, my brethren, Tyler. You want to say something to the people one time? Hello, good people. It is Tyler the Libra, aka Tyler Libra, aka TTL. I'm about to actually just. <laughs> it's, it's been a while. Mm. Um, I'm actually about to change my name to just Tyler. Hmm. The reintroduction of just Tyler. The reintroduction of just Tyler, the three R's. Or it could just be like the <laughs> Prince thing, or like the formerly known as. Formerly known as Tyler. also might have known me as. <laughs> A.K.A. Back in my life, I was. A.K.A. <laughs> <laughs> but, um, sorry that there hasn't been any episodes lately. That's kind of, not, I'm not going to say my fault, but just I've just been caught up with life. Kind of got bodied by life, a few things. I had to uh, bury my grandpa, then I had some health scares in my family. So I do apologize for that because we were going to have some good episodes. He's definitely going to get Brent uh, on the podcast, which we still can do. Like, yeah, he doesn't leave until like this Saturday. So. Okay, so we still got to, we got time, but we got def- probably going to have to do a week, like a week episode, another one, like how we're kind of doing right now, probably maybe like Thursday or something. It just really depends. Well, actually, I might work Thursday, so probably Friday, hopefully. Yeah. Hopefully not too plastered out of the mind either. It's a record. It's plastered. I'm not plastered. Man. I haven't been plastered this entire week. I bet you. <laughs> no, I'm why the lying. fuck? I'm that lying. man going hard, I bet you. Oh, my God. Um, it wasn't my fault, though. I had a company. Yeah, both. <laughs> I'll be going hard. But I guess you're sober right now. So, like, that's you You still technically live true to what you said about not being plastered on another episode. So, that's good. That's some progress, right? I'd say so. Who told you that? You <laughs> I'm, just on the last podcast. <laughs> I'm just kidding. I'm 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 not drinking right now. Right now I am drinking uh unsweetened tea. It's pretty much all I drink nowadays. I think that's still unhealthy as fuck though. Like I'm, if I'm not mistaken. I know why well, well I guess it's sweetened tea. Maybe that's just sweetened tea. It's literally just the how I always thought unsweetened tea was literally just like brewed water. <laughs> <laughs> like that's how I always looked at it, and you know, with how my health is going lately, I would, I'm pretty much trying to, you know, cut down on most things. Cause I had to, I had to talk to our boy Caleb. Shout out to Caleb, cause he's losing all his weight. I was like, man, what are you doing? Cause I need to get back into like tip top shape. And he's like, bro, honestly, just, uh, just separate all your all your meals. Like actually eat like breakfast, lunch, and dinner, and just. Uh, that <clears throat> I mean yeah it like I definitely when I gained the most weight I ever and smaller had, portions too yeah cause yeah especially like if you're normally eating like 3,000 calories cut down to 2,000 but if it's healthy it should still work I know when I gained all that weight so my freshman year of college like the winter season, I was like 170, 175, and then I think I bulked up to 190, but the reason I bulked up to 190 is because I was eating breakfast, lunch, and dinner. And obviously having your snacks in between and things of that nature, but I was I was just eating a lot, and then I was eating like healthy meals, and it just kind of helped me, and it helped me bulk up pretty big. Um, especially me, I'm getting to the point where I'm trying to become more flexible and be able to touch my toes, like when I just stretch down. And I realized that, uh, no one can, what, what's wrong with being flexible? <laughs> Ain't nothing wrong with being flexible as a guy. I just want to be more flexible, more limber. Um, also, because it's like I'm old, like, shit aches. Like, I, I just want to be limber so it don't hurt no more when I get up. Dude, I'm getting hip problems from both sides. That's exactly what I was going to say. It's like, I realized that my problems are my hips. That's why I can't really stretch all the way. So I've been doing leg swings. Those help, like, the side-to-side joints and the, the forward-to-back joints. Like, those have been helping me. And I was doing so good until, like... Like, literally, like, in the middle of the week, shit just got lazy, and I just started stressing out about stuff, so then I got bad on it, but I need to get back to it. And, yeah, so I'm trying to get more flexible, trying to hit the gym more, uh, just trying to be healthier. Is there anything up, since we're technically catching up right now, is there anything going on with you outside of, like, cutting back on drinking, like, eating? Are you doing anything else for your health? Uh, well, besides me um, doing therapy... Every day, every day. Well, I guess that's on another mental health thing that we'll touch on later. But mm-hmm. as far as like physical health, I'm 
the thing, the problem with me is that I'm always like inconsistent mm-hmm. as far as like being able to make it to the gym. Mm-hmm. Like if I like if I go tonight, I probably won't make it again until like Thursday or Friday. Mm-hmm. Yeah, you just like, straight facts. And it's like once I don't know if you're like this. Well, let me ask you: Are you like this to the point where like you're good once you're there? It's just getting there. It's getting there. Yeah. Because like literally, I could because I already have the game plan of what. I'm going to work on when I'm there. It's just a matter of like actually getting in the car, starting up the car, going down the street <laughs> and getting to the gym. Now, are, do you have this issue too of like your essentially recovery? Cause I feel like nowadays, it, like even that's like, I, I want to go to the gym and do legs, but I know I'm going to feel legs probably till Thursday. Like I'll even stretch. I'll stretch before and after I'll drink my BCAAs I'll do the whole nine, and I know I'm still gonna fucking feel it right after the gym. <laughs> yeah, like that's, that's just the price you gotta pay. That's but that's the shit about getting older. I feel like <clears throat> before my legs would hurt for a day. You like, don't rejuvenate as fast, yeah. Like I feel like at least even with college, I and mean, that was one of my hardest leg workouts ever. And like it would probably be that morning and that day, and then the next day I would be sore, and then the next day after that, fine, like back to normal. I'm just like now, nah, like I remember I squatted like hard one week in like December I think I was out for two weeks cause like my shit was just j- bro I had the jiggle legs like when you just try to like move down and you just shaking I was like bro this is not a good look you have the legs when you get off the toilet mm-hmm. <laughs> for this you leg I was swaying right. back and forth and shit but I mean like it's one of those things where you know like you said as we get older it's just one of those things that you gotta just watch out for like and you know it's not necessarily that we haven't lived the we we're not the most healthiest two guys in the world, granted that. But um I mean, we did a pretty fair job taking care of ourselves throughout the year. But past I always high school. We was like I athletes and I always thought that we kinda of stayed in shape to where we shouldn't like this is like beginner level shit. And I don't mean that in no disrespect, but I feel like some of the stuff that I'm like struggling to like because, like, putting on a lot of weight will just make me so sore. And I'm just like, bro, that's not a lot of weight. Like, I used to warm up to this. Right. How? <laughs> like, exactly. Like, it's one of those things. I'm like, damn, like, how did I get to the It's all. You know what? <clears throat> you know what it reminds me of? It's almost like the equivalent of, um, <laughs> and this is just in my head. It's like the equivalent of being Gohan in, like, Dragon Ball GT. <laughs> You're kind of not wrong. <laughs> like... Like how he had all this potential to be the strongest fighter, and then like that, like they said, he just said, "Nah, bro, I'm just gonna chill out," and then that's what happened. But um, but weird thing with Gohan too, <laughs> random topic, but like since we here, it's like so he pretty pretty much trained as a human. Like he really didn't go Super Saiyan two, Super Saiyan three. Like at least uh, like far, as far as the Gohan that's in like Dragon Ball Fighters, and I'm like thinking a lot, and he has potential at least, and he got stronger, and his base form is really strong. So if, like this nigga ever really wanted to train, he could be the right. coldest nigga. Like that's another yeah, thing. I'm like, nah, I'm gonna keep my head in these books. Besides I mean, him and Vegeta, they, those two are the most character development I've ever, I've seen. Uh, and then his just sort of stopped. <laughs> like, yeah. I would probably say as far as Dragon Ball characters go, yeah, that's probably fairly accurate. Because I would say, I would, if anything, I would say Goku's regressed in some ways. Because sometimes he'll do that dumb, idiotic shit. And then sometimes he'll do the cold, badass. Like, um, like, I don't, like Goku really gave Cell a sense of being for, for what? To beat up his son. Like, that right. was some wild... You know what? You know what the crazy part about it is? Is that <clears throat> I read somewhere in, in, uh, in canon that uh on a canon website that that was actually supposed to be like that whole like saga and series was actually supposed to be the end of goku like has the main yeah. protagonist has like every like they were going to erase this man yeah. like from from the entire dragon ball z ball existence like yeah and then like, it was supposed Japan to be Gohan was just was like hey nigga it. what are y'all doing like, right. we, we ain't answer this i think that's why they was like oh we don't know what to do with gohan so uh here yeah. but i mean even so like because technically- so many people just loved goku and they like were attached to goku so and like he they just said you know like we can't but i mean like so him. so like so, take, for instance, like, Naruto and Barto. I don't watch Barto, so I can't really speak on that. But 
that was supposed to be cool because it was like we get to see Naruto grow up, we get to see all the characters we love to grow up, and then we get to see the kids. But then that didn't really turn out cool. Like, like the transition that Dragon Ball Z had into Gohan being the main protagonist would have been perfect for like a Naruto as a Baruto. But they didn't do that because Japan didn't want them. And I was like, I don't want Goku to go away. Right. But it's like you literally shot the character in the foot with Gohan, and then he went back to teaching and stuff like that. Even though he did look, he did look all right in the Boo Saga. Like he did some things in the Boo Saga. Well, he handled his own. <laughs> and I mean, even future Gohan looked all right. Like right. He, he didn't have one arm, but he was getting clapped up by the the fucking androids. But still, he was doing his thing. Like they could have made it work, but. I don't know. I would love if they ever had like a spinoff of Dragon Ball. I would love for them to kind of continue from there. I think that would be an easy seller. I think that would fuck with the canon material. Not really, but it might be one of those things is like what you interpretate and it could be uh, the Goten. canon material. Loki Goten could have been that man too. He chose the gold Goten, route. Goten's been the same nigga for like that 60,000 episodes. <laughs> this nigga's just been Gotenks and that's it. <laughs> but if you seen GT when he was grown up, like I said, he took, that nigga was getting bitches. Well, <laughs> <That's> <laughs> like you like I said, he took the Gohan route, except he was more cooler. <laughs> I, ooh, I, I, yeah, I, don't, I don't know. I, I'm a Gohan fan, so I can't really stand on that hill. Speaking of hills, <laughs> speaking of hills, the bill couldn't get on the Capitol Hill and get in the Capitol. Um, That's crazy, <laughs> man. If you don't know what we're talking about, we're referencing January 6th, where people, we don't know who they're affiliated with, who, Antifa, Trump, whatever, whatever. It's just a dangerous rhetoric that these people stormed the Capitol Hill and had people's lives in danger. Some of those people was ready to pop off, though. Like, I don't know if you've seen some of the security guards and guards right. in, in the Capitol that was ready for it. Some of them were ready for smoke. I think five people died. Um, my thing is, like, there's some people that's going to say, like, oh... See, look at this propaganda. Like, they're trying to trick you while they pass other, other shit underneath. And it's like, look, I, I, don't, I don't fuck with that either. Like, if, if it's really some conspiracy theories going on and things of that nature, fuck that shit too. But we got to address the elephant in the room. They stormed the Capitol, my G. Like, Which no, is something that should never happen in, the, ever, in history. Ever. Ever. Like, I don't think... I, like, as a black man in America... If you would have told me, it, 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 it don't even have to be about your race, but just me as being a black man. If you would say, hey, bro, let's go storm the Capitol Hill. Nigga, what? Right. Like, we would never, we would have been <laughs> fucking, boom, boom, boom. Like, so we touched, I put, our feet touched the bottom of the Capitol Hill in the intro. Like, we would have got clapped up so crazy. Like, do you have any thoughts on that? Like, anything? Like, that shit was wild. I just think about, like, how it would have gone if black people would have even if we would have even talked about doing something like that orchest- let alone orchestrate it and then let alone go out and actually do it I just think of all the casualties that would have happened on that day just think of everything that all the families that we would have saw had to bury their family members and stuff like that mm-hmm. um, all the backlash that it would have caused like that shit was so wild to me. It was like I think, only, and only five people died. And like, there's more videos coming out of like them just yeah, casually vi- talking. Yeah, the videos them. coming out every single day. As a matter of fact, I just saw one earlier this morning with the guy with the like I don't some sort of animal print, and he's like, "Look at this American here," and he's like, "You all right? You need me to call police?" Like they're checking on him and shit like that. But then the Black Lives Matter movements and things of that nature is is dangerous or they're criminals and things like that. And it's just like, bro, like y'all. It was fairly orchestrated for every, obviously everything looked like that was very orchestrated for, to keep everybody safe as opposed to trying to keep everybody the fuck out. Mm -hmm. Where has part of our movements throughout this entire summer, it seemed like there was no barrier. There was no safety. And it was as like people are like videos. people are more concerned about the people are more concerned about small businesses that they never visited and never will visit in their fucking life than they are for human beings. And like that's what bothers me. And I was like, as someone that owns technically a business with a few things, and it's like I don't own property, but my businesses are online. Fuck my business. Like I, I've always been the type of person like adapt or perish. Like like word of Triple H. Like niggas like. Y- 
you got to move with the times, bro. Like, if you're not moving with the times, you you lost in the sauce. Just like, stagnant. Yeah, like... And that's the worst I, thing I'll to be, be right that. now. I, if, if me... Lose, like, my business takes damage in my business. Not saying go fuck up my business because I'll beat your motherfucking ass. I'm not saying <laughs> that, that at all. But I'm saying if, if it's a little damage here and there just for the greater good of people so that my kids one day can have a peaceful life and they're not judged off the color of their skin, then I'm with all of that shit. Whatever yeah. we got to do. It's like, I don't have a side. I don't really... I think it's all evil, honestly. And I think there's... The older I'm getting, that there's no satisfaction in people. Because, like, even if you agree with all, someone all the way, like, there's going to be someone out there in this world that hates me because I'm black. <laughs> and that, that's that's, the, that's the thing with, like, like because, you know, you know, we have friends. I'm not going to say no names, but we, we have friends that, you know, like, see all sides of it and try to point at the conspiracies and it's like, y'all not even paying attention to this. It's like, as a black man, bro, we, we got to start at frame one. Like, we got shit, we got to fix at the gate before right. I even get there. Because even if it's, like, all this conspiracy and this deeper meaning and they got aliens and fucking Area 51 type shit. All I'm that shit ca- going exa- on. I'm not caring about that. I'm not, I'm, I'm just worried about point A. <laughs> if I can see through, out the door. if I can just see point A and I can understand and I can realize it, okay then, then I can move to whatever it is that you're talking about. Mm-hmm. But right now, I'm only seeing, I'm only seeing what is being played out in society right now. And it's like, you can't even get in the door, my G, unless we fix this problems that we have now. That's that's what I'm saying. Let's fix these problems we have now. I think people don't realize that. And also, I don't know if you heard, but on Facebook, I heard that um, the day after the inauguration, or whatever it's called, I'm sorry if I'm, I got a headache, I'm tired. Whatever it's called where they indict uh, Joe Biden as president. So I think that's January 20th. So that's in two days, technically, is this recording. The day after, it's supposed to be Doomsday. What the fuck does Doomsday mean? I've been seeing it on social media and Facebook. I don't know. I'm saying my black ass in the crib. I ain't going outside. But it's going to be dangerous times. So it's going to be scary for whatever the fuck that means. Did you hear anything about this? No, I haven't heard this the first time I'm hearing it. I mean, I heard about it last week. Somebody said it was on Facebook. And, you know, you got to take Facebook with a grain of salt. But the fact that we're hearing something now... Where we didn't really, really hear. I guess they did plan it. Like, Trump obviously tweeted out some something about January 6th. And then, obviously, it was well orchestrated. So, it was a plan. And people were driving up to D.C. to do that shit. And that's another thing that we don't really have to talk about. But, like, nigga, they planned this shit. Like, niggas were leaving Arizona. Who, it was across country to go to D.C. for this. Like, that is so crazy to me. Dudes from right here in our own home turf. Mm-hmm. Saw that Iowa flag out there. Yeah, this is so sad. It's, it's so weird. Like, that's what I'm saying. It's like dude. that whole situation. It just got me thinking to the point where we saw two different Americas mm-hmm. play out within this last year or so. Within even the last eight to six months. Like, and, um, I'll go ahead. You know, it's one of those things where like. I'm not going like they're so worried about they're so worried about what we're doing as opposed to not even trying to see the why. And as far as that situation on Capitol Hill went, nobody they weren't even caring or they they weren't even trying to care about the why. They just saw what was going on and they just it pretty much just protected the what. Mm-hmm. And the what is, you know who. Mm-hmm. And then that's what's sad too, is like if you support if you if you support Trump now, I can't I can't rob. Because it's like he's spewing this dangerous rhetoric that's like rhetoric that got him banned scared. from every single social media that there is. Because they don't want him to influence any more fucking people. Like that shit is so scary. And then it's like, oh no, but see I'm a Republican, but I don't fuck with no 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 no. Like, I've never seen no shit like this. How he's motivating people. He's an evil villain. Like, this is this nigga is better than Thanos. Like, this nigga is really an evil villain. I was, I, was, I was talking to mom about this the other day. I've never seen such a group of people, a particular amount of group of people, that have went so hard for a president in my entire fucking life. Like, in my 26 years, I've never seen a president this glorified, this worshipped almost, this kind of cult-like, like, ambiance to him and it's it's so scary and it's 
very uncertain to what shit is going to happen, even in under new presidency. Mm-hmm. Because it's like, we don't know what happened with Joe Biden. And it's like, I do like some of the things he's trying to implement, but who knows what happened with those people, too. I wouldn't want to see our people riot and shit like that. I mean, obviously, the Black Lives Matter thing, that's completely different. Like, that that, that was just at a point. Like, there was just too much shit. Like, I've seen more black men die than I probably should have in my life, if I'm right. being honest. And I, they're not even close to me. Imagine when they're actually close to me. Like, say if some, God forbid, knock on wood, of course, but if something like that would happen to you, I'm going crazy. I'm... I'm literally there at every process, all that shit. And then, and it's, it makes you think, realistically. Because you remember, because, you know, obviously, both literally born, same month, same year, like, just 20 days apart, 25 to be exact. But it makes you wonder, because, like, we're both 90s babies. You know how they tell us, like, early 90s and stuff like that, or late 90s and things, like how you're supposed to keep your sexual preference by yourself, or to yourself, you're supposed to keep your religious views, your politic views by yourself. It makes you think, like, damn, was this the reason why y'all motherfuckers wanted us to keep it to ourselves? Because y'all don't know how to fucking act if we tell you? And it's like, and like, like to not even go on a tangent, but, like, how people care about same-sex marriage and, like, they don't want that shit to happen. Like, fam, that ain't got nothing to do with you. What difference does it... Like, you know, like, it's it literally makes me think, like, how they said, keep all that shit private. Is this the reason why you want us to keep it private? Because y'all gonna act the whole asshole? It's, it's, it's wild. Everybody's too busy. I don't know, man. Everybody's too busy with trying to trying to settle down and trying to close off what could be, you know, from, you know, us as black people. But really, in all honesty, you don't even know, like, you don't even, like, understand what could be because you just don't want to see it. Mm -hmm. So it could be totally different than what, you know, people out of our color, out of our race actually see. But... Nobody's understanding it. Nobody wants to. And it's kind of sad because our voice is really kind of not being heard right now, especially in this particular time in America right now where it's almost like we have to be closed off. And it's kind of scary because then you got dudes like me, dudes like you that like kind of have no filter to we, we speak our mind. And then that's the thing, and then it's just like... And anybody else out there. When I go so hard, like, or just like, I'm really passionate about the stuff that, uh... When I go so hard, I'm really passionate about the stuff that, like, we see is because it's like... Bro, if you go to, like, my family reunion, you go to your family reunion, we got black cousins, black aunties, uncles, nieces, nephews. Right. The, moms, dads, grandmas, grandpa, like, we got all these black family members, and it's like, I see it every day, so it's like, if it's affecting me, I know it's got to affect them, right. and it's like, I, all my family members that I know, like, they ain't gonna hurt no fly, so it's like, of course, it's gonna be some bullshit if they get pulled over or, or something like that, so it's like, you don't want it to happen, it's, so you can't protect me if you're scared of me, but, I don't know, um, not like a loosely topic, it's still a serious topic, I guess, but, uh, you wanted to touch on working on MLK? They, I didn't work. Well, I think I worked on his birthday, but I, I didn't w have to work today. Why well, you feel like it should be a holiday for the black delegation? <laughs> I feel like if it's recognized as a holiday, if it's celebrated as a holiday, then therefore, I think we should, should take it more serious too. Yeah, it's same, and uh, it's almost like a why not? Because it's like there's not that January holiday. But then people are gonna be like, oh, what about Christopher Columbus Day? Yeah. I can see that. I, I can see that. I can see but where they're already going with that. That's October or November. Oh, I don't really care. I think it's you one know? of those things like <laughs> it just kind of gets brought up. Because, I mean, I think it got brought up in school, but I don't think, I don't really, even like, I don't think we really did shit for it. So, I mean. I have never, I have yet to work as establishment, I guess, or an industry where. Um, Martin Luther King Day, like, wasn't recognized. It has a, like, quote unquote, like, off holiday. I don't. I did. It's gonna be hard to find a business like that because you figure unless it's completely to... black owned. Like, I was thinking about this shit in the car this morning going to work. Cause I had a coworker ask me if we work tomorrow. I was like, 
Yeah, we were tomorrow. <laughs> like, it, like, it just got me thinking, like, damn, like. I'm trying to think. I think at iOS and I did have MLK Day off one year. Don't don't quote me on that, but I feel like there was one school year in college that I did have it off. And I didn't have to do anything. I think maybe, or it could have been my teachers, too. It could have been the classes I had. Because I do remember, like, it was MLK Day and I didn't go to school or something along those lines. Um... Yeah, like, I definitely remember, like, it, I, I think it would be great, because I think it would bring more attention, and then it's also, like, what's crazy, too, is, like, the year he was assassinated, he was also voted the most hated person in America. Which, That's crazy, I never knew crazy. anything about. And also, I've been telling people, I've had a few conversations, I actually had this conversation last night with someone, uh, that, like, who, like, are dead people that I would love to, like sit down, have, like, a dinner with, and just talk to him is, like, definitely I'm okay. Because I would love to know how he was so persistent and so determined to make change for his people, even though he might not be able to see the change. And then, like, just just how he was so determined to do it. Because it's, like, literally there's people in your face calling you the N-word and disrespecting you, and you're doing this march, and you're doing a peaceful protest, and things of that nature. Like, because it's easy to become a Malcolm X so easy to become Malcolm right. X. And that's no shame towards Malcolm X because he's a great leader too himself. Like, he's a great man. But it's just how he moved about things in MLK and, like, stuff he did. It's I would completely love completely different type of coaches. Yeah, like, I would love to know if this would be a fly on the wall and listen to him and just see that. And, uh, I'd like a conversation, like a debate, a debacle between both. I think that would be funny as hell. <laughs> or interesting as hell, one of the two. I mean, I also, I also look at it as, like, everybody's part of MLK to a point. You just see a lot more Malcolms. I heard that. I heard that to a point this year. Like, everybody, everybody's trying to be, it was, like, way into, like, how, like, the protests and stuff were going to going through. And, you know, everybody wants to, we have enough Martins in this world. How about we get some Malcolms? I just love how it's just kind of, like, I don't, I think it's still relatively around the same population, and it's not saying, like, our ancestors were weak. I didn't like those, like, we're not my ancestors. It's like, no, our ancestors were still strong, but it's just, it's just they didn't really see it. So, right. when you say you're in the South, and you're, like, you're slave or segregation, of course you're not going to be able to see if some shit's peaceful and this, this that, and the third. Like, it was almost like convincing them to go North. Like, yeah, you would be free North, but you don't know how far North really is. And right. think about it from just a traveling standpoint, like how far we've gone. Like, I, it's just more so now that you can see it and then now you have your opinion and your voice. And I just love to see it. And I love to see, hopefully, the because I think it's only like 12 or 13%. And that, that's if black population. And I think probably there might honestly be more I want to say mixed individuals than there are probably full black, probably thirty percent. Because you figure like I don't think I don't know a lot off the top of my head. Honestly, I don't mean you are, but I want to say that's pretty rare. But happy MLK Day! Uh, appreciate you. Thank you for everything you did. I'm grateful for my life. Um, yeah, hopefully one day it could be a recognize as a national holiday and that uh, we don't have to work and we can just recognize and use that time to just be great and be better people and also like seeing as it's like january there's no holidays in january why, why the fuck not you black know? history month is right around the corner i just thought about that too mm-hmm. <laughs> black history month is a good month too like i like that month a lot it just sucks it's short but hopefully it gets some recognition and love that we deserve this it's gonna be interesting black history month this year i think Oh, of all the shit that's going on, yeah. Mm-hmm. I wonder how people are going to go about that one. Now, you know, so unfortunately... we talked about you. We'll go on. It is what it is at that point. I don't even know what the title of this episode, but unfortunately we couldn't do a playoff predictions because we... This episode was supposed to be done Saturday, but I had an unfortunate family emergency, so we couldn't do it Saturday. Right. So we couldn't uh, predict the games. Well, I guess one game happened by the time that I was actually going to go and be over here for the podcast. But we know who the final four teams are. The final four teams are the Bucks and the Packers, and then Kansas City and Buffalo. Now... Were there any surprises out of these teams for you? Did you watch really any of the thought, games? I really thought that Breeze Brady game was going to go. I thought I honestly thought it was going to be a shootout. 
I think both teams have pretty good defense to where they could have the other side of the ball stay on the field as long as they could. But at the same time, I felt like uh, I want I wouldn't say Breeze was. I would say you can't you saw last night was when I saw when he was like starting to regress. I haven't watched too much football this. this it's season, it's, it's over. There's a reason why he's probably gonna retire. Hey, he got a noodle I don't, arm. I really that don't got a noodle. You got a better arm than Drew Brees right now. He, he he didn't attempt to pass twenty yards. Man's been doing this for twenty straight years. He didn't attempt to pass for over twenty yards. They they brought Jameis Winston in to throw a deep ball, and that was the farthest thrown ball all by the Saints all night. It, you can't win with Michael Thomas as a receiver, uh, Alvin Kamara. Like you can't win because there's probably so much like. If you can't throw over the ball, the ball over twenty yards, how are you how are you gonna have anything scary? There's no reason for my safeties to be back twenty yards. Right. I, I can have them in the box, and now that shuts down the running game. That shuts down your little slants game that you love to do. That shuts down a lot of games that you you can't implement a game plan. Once I saw that he never threw a pass and he didn't look right, he didn't even look good on the ten to fifteen. I was like, yeah, I think it's time. What they pretty much did was play cover five, where they just literally they literally took away the middle of the field to where. Breeze was forced to throw outside, and when he was forced to throw outside, that's when the interception started coming. But I mean, even then, he when he threw outside, he didn't throw twenty yards on the like it. It's you could cover fifteen yards, like as a right. DB, as a safety, as a linebacker. A linebacker can cover fifteen yards, but you yeah. throwing the ball thirty down forty, where I gotta go chase you. It's it's over. It's a lot of real estate that you're giving up. That honestly and. You know, I don't want to brag or nothing, but I did call all the games, right? Because I, I had a feeling Buffalo would beat Baltimore. I didn't think it would go that way that it did. I had a feeling that... I'm not uh, on that one. I thought Green Bay would win. And then the only surprise really was kind of... I, I picked Tampa Bay, but I didn't think Tampa Bay would look as good as they did. I think they looked okay. Brady looked all right. He was making some completions. He, he was Brady was missing. one yard off of a 200-yard passing game. Mm. He had 199 last night. Mm. And, you know, Bra- Brady was just, I, w- I wouldn't say he was game managing, but, like, he, Brady does, he's the most probably strateg- strategizing quarterback that probably I've seen as far in the NFL lately because mm-hmm. he, know- he understands the situation that, before the game even happens. He knows that, he knows what the Saints defense is, so he's like, look, if I gotta have a hundred yard passing game, or I gotta have have two hundred yard passing game, this ain't gonna be a three hundred, four hundred night. I'm gonna just do these check downs. <laughs> I'm gonna get the ball out of his hands. I think also, um, I hate to break bring it. I know it's kind of random too because they didn't make the playoffs, but I think Cam's probably gonna be done too. Like I think shoulder, I like, shoulder injuries are serious. Like Breeze out of torn labrum, so we're here to get his shoulder completely done. Luckily, he took his time, and he didn't take as much damage as Cam Newton did, and he was able to stretch it out for however long he was in New Orleans and made a career out of it. So congratulations to Drew Brees for that. But I think Cam, the way he's kind of designed, how he's running, he's going to need at least another year on that shoulder. Like That's a 6'6", 250-pound man. That's with a cool. bad arm. <laughs> and he's a quarterback, too. Because I, like I feel like he didn't do terrible in New England. Like He could have been better, but his arm is just not the same. Like His arm... Was not making any of those throws. Um, is there any predictions that you have for next week? Who's going to go to the Super Bowl? Now, my only thing is like, I, I I'm gonna be basic with my predictions, just because I don't know if Patrick Holmes is playing. They, they said actually, what they said was he didn't suffer a concussion. He like when he got dragged and yoked by his neck that there was a nerve in his neck that kind of just, like, shut down on his body, which I could believe because, you know, how, like, karate experts and all that stuff, like, if they hit you right in the right spot, you'll right. just, boom, boom. <laughs> like, so maybe, but I don't know. He said he passed all his tests with flying colors. We'll see. Say Mahomes doesn't play or he's not the same, I would love to see the Bills and the Bucks go, and the reason why is because that, there's that storyline there of, like, the Bills actually going to the Super Bowl, so that's cool. Oh, and, then, and then there's that storyline. <laughs> hold on. Hold on. Hold on. Hold on. Hold on, hold on, hold on. Before, you, before you cry, <laughs> there's also that storyline of Tom Brady 
Tom Brady versus the Bills, who he's been clapping their cheeks for the last, like, 14 seasons or whatever. That would be funny if Tom Brady beats the Bills again. <laughs> and they're like, damn, nigga, we thought we was done with your ass in the NFC. Now you came back in the Super Bowl and beat us? I would love that storyline, but I would also love for Stefan Diggs to get one. I think that Bills team is kind of good, and it has that, like, momentum that you need, that momentum. Oh, they're hot right now. I'm going mm-hmm. right, But then if, say, Mahomes plays and he's healthy – I think as far as being a Midwest person in a Midwest state and like Kansas City versus Green Bay, like that's literally all the Midwest is going to talk about for the next 10 years. It's probably all the merch you're going to see. You better get all the cheese, you better get all the corn out, you better get all the Man, K- that's all you Casey's see. better be open in if 24 we ever go to, hours. If we ever go to Wisconsin, that's all you're going to see. If you ever go to Kansas City, that's all you're going to see. So I would love, as the Midwestern in me, I would love to see Kansas City and Green Bay and I have Kansas City winning. But... I don't know. What about you? I think Aaron Rod. If it if it wasn't going to be Breeze, I would like Aaron Rodgers to get one more ring. Because mm. I think after because how long has he been? Probably about like what 14, 15 years now going on. I mean, he's been in the league for a while. The only problem with Rodgers is he he sat for like four years. He sat for a good he while. He did. Behind, uh, behind that cor- trash ass quarterback named Brett Favre, but um, right. <laughs> I don't know. Brett Favre's all right, but he ain't he ain't top ten. Like, this nigga. Yeah, he ain't the top ten best quarterback of all time. He ain't top ten. He ain't at least ten. Uh, I could, I would put John Elway. I would put Joe Montana. I would put Tom Brady. I would put Drew Brees. I would put Ben Roethlisberger. I would put <laughs> Tom Brady. <laughs> I probably put Aaron Rodgers. He might not even be the best Green Bay Packer quarterback. I would put Aaron Rodgers before. You're right. Brett Bart Starr is better than both of them. I even put Bart Starr in front. <laughs> I don't know about Aaron Rodgers, but if he was the second ring, I would put Aaron Rodgers to head. But so you would like to see Aaron Rodgers with you? Does it matter who against who? But I wanted to be Packers versus Bills. Really. Because I just can't stand the Chiefs. Everybody says that, but I don't, I don't feel that way about the Chiefs that I do the Patriots. Like, when the Patriots kept winning, that shit was annoying. That shit was like, nigga, God damn, nobody can beat this move. <laughs> that <laughs> shit. That man, is like, you got that man number 12? No, and what made it so bad was, is like, the Patriots kept winning, and then they kept talking shit about them winning. And then they would cheat, too. And then, like, they were, well, they, oh, maybe they cheated, maybe they didn't. They would have the scandals and shit like that, too. And they keep winning, and they're just like, Ha, ha, ha. I was like, all right, bro. Y'all can't even be humble. Y'all are like, like, at least the Yankees go, like, hey, bro, we just spent money, bro. Like, y'all, I don't think y'all really cheat, but y'all, y'all spend a lot of fucking money. We go for broke. We have insurance plans. We have a very, very expensive insurance plans in order to win that 28. And this is like, damn. And that 28 coming this year. There's going to be another, there's going to be another little year right on this banner that I have. I don't know, bro. The Dodgers still exist. The, the Padres exist. Sorry. I don't know. Padres got one man. No, they they got two. I feel like. Well, they got a decent lineup. I'm gonna have to bring Brent on here. Machado's been in his whole life in San Diego. Well, they gave him. They gave him his whole life in that contract. They shit. That's one thing I wish I did play. I wish I did play a little bit more baseball. They getting paid. They get paid. It is not no joke. Speaking of paid and paper. I say it like that for emphasis, you feel me? Um, tax season. I got three. I got three coming in. <laughs> three what? I got three ta- uh, W-2s coming in. Yeah, three different jobs last year? Yeah. What was it? I, so you got the one now. One now, and then I worked. You had that car one. Yeah. What was the other one? And then, I, then a tire place, tire warehouse for like a month. Oh. I literally worked there for a month. So I'm still getting something. <laughs> Best believe I'm still getting something. Uh, I I don't know what I'm going to get. I, don't, I think I'm honestly going to owe more than I'm going to get because I didn't work that long. So I didn't make that much. And then when I did work, I did unemployment and I got a lot from unemployment. So they about to snatch your they shit. They finna yoga fight, take my shit away. Right, thank you. Like as long as I can pay it off with the, the taxes, like I can keep like whatever they take, I can just pay it all off with within them doing the taxes. I don't really care. I'm not too worried about it because I did take unemployment. It is what it is. 
But also, it was a fucking pandemic, so it wasn't it wasn't my fault. Like, I needed <laughs> money, so like, what do you want me to do? Um, I don't know. This tax money is going to my next home, wherever that. that may be. So you gonna save Stay up? Stay tuned. Of course, I'm gonna save up. I'm gonna. I'm That's not smart. a spending man anymore. That's smart. I uh. I don't live high on the hog anymore. Grand, I got two cars and they both. <laughs> don't you, do you have to make payments on both? What? Do you have to make payments on both? No, one's paid off. Oh, I was about to say that shit, bro. But that one, the other one you got, ain't that like four? The YG four hundred, ain't that like four more? How much is it? Twenty dollars short of five hundred. <laughs> <laughs> Nigga, my chest hurts. <laughs> <laughs> I just grabbed my own. <laughs> God damn, bro. Bro, it ain't anything close to what I was seeing the other day. I saw the other day. It was like, one because I follow like uh, Dodge memes or Mopar memes. Uh-huh. It literally said, like, <laughs> this dude was at a Dodge dealership. That shit literally said 28% APR rating. And monthly payment, eleven hundred dollars a month for ninety six months. That's eight years. You paying eleven hundred a month for eight years? Yeah, that shit sounds scary. That that I I sound bro. That's I wish I would. <laughs> that's crazy as hell. I would never, never in my life. And it it had to be a Hellcat. It had to be a demon. As a matter of fact, I think it was like a. Yeah, I think it was like a 20, 2019 demon. That shit sounds, bro. I'm not going to lie to you. I wanted Even to. if I had the money to spend like that, I'm not paying $1,200, $1,100 a month. For eight years. For a car. So basically, I, I had up those numbers. So pretty much, so 96 months, eight years, $1,100 a month. That almost rounds up to a hundred and ten thousand dollars. You paying a hundred and ten thousand dollars on a sixty to seventy thousand dollar car? Pretty Damn. much. What the fuck? <laughs> that add up? What? Right? No shit. <laughs> That's just it's crazy. I uh, I think I want to get Jeep, but also I don't want to pay. I'm trying to say the twos. I want to get a Wrangler. So I might trade in that fucker for a Wrangler out there. I I, I, I want to pay something in the twos. I don't want something high. The thing about my my credit union is that like they split up the four. <laughs> so it's like two so it's like two thirty and then another two thirty like at the beginning of the month and two thirty at the end of the month. Mm. I mean that's better, but that still hurts too. And uh, luckily, speaking of tax season, I did, unfortunately. God is good. Was able to keep paying on the Arizona payments, so I officially have that under $1,000. So if you want PayPal me or cash out me, you know, get at me. So I can shit off. But I say all that to say I finally got approved of a credit card. About time. Not a lot, but 300 And I'm hoping that I can do the credit card payment for good credit. Like, basically, I don't know how... I, I don't quote me on this, but whenever your credit cards like report, they report it twice. Are right. are they no? They report it once, but I think it's like a four day window to basically pay it like at the beginning of the month and then pay it right before they uh, do it. Like report your shit, and it's supposed to be two supposed to count as two payments. I, I don't know. I I probably explained it poorly, but if you look it up, you could probably find it and like find a better expl- explanation. But it's supposed to build your credit up. So the fact that I was able to get a credit card finally, I wanted to get a credit card just in case of emergencies or just to have that money on the side. But I want to build up my credit too. So because everything that your boy was having before and paying for before was all out of me. It was like all me. I was like a, like a dope dealer. Like I, That shit was all my bread. <laughs> it came out of me. So now <laughs> I have a second option and it feels so much better to have a second. It almost feels like a weight's been lifted off of my shoulders. So I like that way I can pay, like I can have somebody else pay it and I'll just worry about it later. So I'm not going to go crazy with the credit card, like I said. I'm going to just pretty much put all my miscellaneous stuff on there. So like Netflix, Hulu, um, SoundCloud, uh, I might buy Disney Plus whenever I get a smart TV in a place, but I don't know. I'm not worried about that right now. 
But yeah, I'm gonna put all my miscellaneous stuff on there so that way it doesn't take it out of my account so I can just have some money. Maybe I might even put my gym membership on there. I don't know. We'll see. But and then that's yeah. what I do. Like my Apple Music and like my iTunes and everything is on my credit card. Mm. See, I might my do Adobe that. is on my credit card. I might do that too. Hmm. That that wouldn't be a bad idea at all. Um, Ew. Like yeah, that that's pretty much my plan. Is just pretty much to pay. Wait, what's your credit limit? Is it I? I don't go any higher than eight hundred dollars. I want so at least be paying that back. <laughs> I want to get my credit card limit to in the thousands, just in case for emergencies. That's literally the only reason why I want to get a thousand. It's like I'm not gonna do anything stupid with it. I just want to have my miscellaneous stuff on it. But if I can get it in the thousands and then say like keep my payment in the hundreds, I'll be good. I can manage that a lot, and that that's a lot of stress off my back. So that's I'm hoping. I'm pretty sure my credit card bill is like five hundred dollars right now. How much is it a month though? Like twenty five dollars. Oh, I don't spend anything? See, it's like oh, so you gotta pay off what you spend too. Oh damn! Yeah. But I I think you should still be okay though, if you do that. At least when I have my Wells Fargo one, if you do your the the. Payment that I had, like if you pay it twenty five, and then you pay it like say if it's due like the twentieth or something like that. If you pay it twenty five before then, like you pay it twice, that should build up your credit too. I think you should be okay. But I don't want to do that. You know what? You're right. <laughs> <laughs> um, Maybe I have that twenty five for gas. You're right too. I you know because I'm not gonna lie. There was definitely times where I had epiphany when I was working at Footlocker. Like my nigga, like. There was times where I don't see honestly I don't see how anybody that has a credit card that has a working credit card that has that spends as much as they do I honestly don't understand how you still have good enough credit like in the seven hundreds because my shit is banged I wouldn't say it's like banged but like it's, it's it's still it's still decent like I can still get some shit with my credit but no, my credit took a shot my credit got shot like boys in the hood like Ricky. Pff. Like, my shit got shot. That's your problem. <laughs> but, um, anyway. Yeah. So, at times, I really thought about, like, canceling my credit card because, like, it just was, like, I was just, like, spending, like, a shit ton of money just trying to pay it off. But, at the same time, I was like, wait, I need this. I actually need this credit card for things that, like, I don't want to pay out of my own um, my own account. Granted, the money still going to pay off this shit is still going to come out of my account, but still. I'd rather have my shit now or later. Now, uh, now rather than later. Because it's like, technically, so I would, because you consider a credit card a source of income. That you're not using all the time. So, unless you're going crazy with your credit card, then obviously, yeah, you're going to fucking screw yourself over. Like I know motherfuckers that have three credit cards. Yeah, them niggas wild. Them niggas will screw their stuff over. But, like, me having a credit card and then me having, like, the accounts that I have now, I have two technical sources that I can depend on now, which is nice. Because it's not just me. Right. And then, like, if the podcast blows up, that'll be another source of income. And then, say, Twitch or YouTube blow up, that's separate sources of income as well so i'm trying to build multiple sources of income so that way if i don't work at said place i'm not screwed over you know right yeah um <laughs> <laughs> this nigga here oh uh, but yeah we uh touched on personal health and on me i guess well i guess we touched on more physical health than anything uh how's your mental how is your mental um there's still situations to where like my mental health is kind of it, it dwindles it fluctuates from like up down forward backwards left right um throughout the day and one thing that i'm trying to get that's one thing that i'm trying to be consistent about and honestly it's the only thing that i really fucking care about in this world right now besides my mom is how i'm handling shit every day cuz there's still stuff that like I'm seeing on an everyday basis that kind of trigger me as far as like sadness or just feeling some type of way goes. And 
you know, it's not one of those things where like, I just want to sit mope and cry and bitch about throughout the day. It's not something that like I take my time out doing, you know, cause like, I mean, the shit gets tiring. The shit adds more stress onto you. It adds more gray hairs onto you. Depression is literally the worst ager that you could possibly have on yourself spiritually emotionally physically and um i'm just trying to lower the dosage of how much depression i can tolerate because it never goes away Mm -hmm. there's always like what people don't realize is that and you even told me this a couple weeks ago that like happiness is such a state in state of mind and it's all about how much happiness that you're willing to put on yourself every single day and how much of a tolerance that you have to block out any type of negative and depression. Mm-hmm. Some people's tolerance is high. Some people's tolerance is low. Like mine throughout this entire time, throughout the shit that I've been through, it's been really low. Like I've been, it's not been an easy go for me, but luckily I mean, I'm am still in therapy. You know, I'm talking about it every day. I'm journaling about it every day. I'm posting shit every day. Mm-hmm. You know, just to just to make sure, you know, just to make sure that I'm okay with, you know, talking about because, you know, I you know me, I used to be not one to like you know really talk about shit or like, I mean, I w- used to bottle that shit up and then we would have a car ride and and I would just it'd almost be. I, it know it almost be like mind boggling. Like God damn, nigga, how long did you keep this shit in? <laughs> right, and it's just like one of those things where like I, I don't want to do that anymore, or I'm trying to do less of it because it's really therapeutic to actually talk about stuff, and it's as therapeutic. It's therapeutic it's to hard. actually talk about shit that you don't want to necessarily talk about, or you think that it's a struggle or it's a stress to talk about, because. Mm-hmm. You know, I've talked to people, also people that have depression and anxiety and stuff like that. They say that literally the hardest thing about it is, the hardest thing about it is, is actually like getting up the strength and like the mindset to actually like talk about certain things. Like you could, it, it could be just the simplest things. Like how was your day? Most, most people with depression or like, you know, are going through it would just say, eh. You know, and then you'd be like, well, what the fuck is that? Just that, you know, you don't, it's just a middle, like it's so neutral. Like you just, your I'm, mind is just so in between and like, there's no balance of it. Like you just feel blah every single day. And I guess, cause I used to say that a lot. I, I would, everybody has asked me how my day is. I'm like, it's okay. Or it's all right. And like, like there's no, like, there's no actual eh, good, eh, this like, eh, well, let me but tell then you that's, this. But that's what I'm saying is like. So, I probably, like, if you clinically dose me, I probably would say I'm, like, depressed and all that stuff. Well, especially now. Now, I shouldn't be smiling at all, but I, I, I'm just built weird, nigga. I don't know how this to describe it. Like, yeah, y'all see how I am. Y'all see my mood, so y'all wouldn't even know I was going through it. Like I said, I had that family emergency that fucked me up. Like, my grandpa, I don't know if I'm still recovering from that shit. But, like, yeah, I would always say that I'm good or I'm neutral. It's just because it's, like... I'm so goal driven. I'm so looking in the future that I'm not really enjoying the moment. But it's like at the same time, I have nothing to celebrate in the fucking moment. Like it's like I have friends that fuck with me and care for me, but then at the same time, I'm like, I'm alone. And it's like, right? Oh, go celebrate with your friends. Like I'm not really trying to do all that because of the pandemic. Because I'm not the type of person. I don't like being in environments where I feel like I have to be something else in order to enjoy that environment. Exactly. I fuck with environments where like you fuck with me as an individual and we're kicking it as friends and it's like we don't have to drink, but it's an option. We don't have to get food, but it's an option. But I feel like some people only want to kick it with me if they're high or drunk or something like that. And it's like, damn, that's, that's, like, I'm depressed, but I'm aware, too. So I don't know if that's a good thing or a no, bad thing. No, nah, because that, cause that's what I pretty much am. Like, just the other night, I found myself, I found myself in a situation, a place that I did not want to be in. Downtown court. You know, and you know how it goes around there. Like, mm-hmm. head on a swivel, anything can happen. And, like, it's one of those things where, like, I feel like, at the moment, 
I was just standing there, and Orlando and Brent, shout out to Orlando and Brent, they were just looking at me, and they were like, yo, you okay? And I was like, no, like, I'm not fucking okay. Like, I don't want to be, I feel like I'm regressing my strength and my growth by just being here with you guys. And that's not to, that's not put a slight on anybody else. I love them to death. I love being around my friends, but I do not like that environment. I don't know what I can control, what I can't, what I can't control in that environment, and that's one of the things that you've always taught me, and I've always took it with a grain of salt. Now I understand. Now I see where you're coming from. I think it's just also because it's like, it's you. You can never. I mean, I don't see. It's it's almost like how I was kind of like saying like to keep it simple with like the conspiracy theorists and stuff like that. But it's the quite the opposite when it comes to like just me and like in social environments because maybe it's social anxiety too. It could be. Um, like, I just can never relax in a social environment because, exactly. it's like, I'm I'm worried about, like, if our girl homies are there, I'm worried about that. Because, like, the shit that I'm worried about is simple, but the shit that they have to worry about is crazy. It's like, you would never think of a guy trying to, like, rape you or drug you or kidnap right. you or shit. Like, so it's like, I'm head on a swivel. Like, I'm trying to be in the moment, but I'm also trying to make sure that all my friends are good. And then they're saying, for well, when friends drink it too much or they're going too crazy. It's like, I don't want them to... But like, good luck, nigga, because, like, obviously, they're not in the clear state of mind of where they could Uber a ride home. Or I like, can never, ever for life me. I am never, ever. And still to this day, I would never, ever get drunk on court. Yeah, I can't. I'm not that. doing, I'm not getting drunk in a pub, in a club, party, anything, because there's too much variables that could happen in that situation. Like, I could stumble. I blacked out once, and that, that shit was not fun. I, I, I have yet to do it again. Because who... Because who the fuck's going to care? Motherfuckers going to be on, on the phone taking pictures mm-hmm. of you. Mm-hmm. Like They're going to be saving it to their story, tell you later, be like, hey, bro, <laughs> this is what happened to you last month. This is what happened to you last night. Be like, you good? Nah, bro, I think you know. I'll never let you live the <laughs> shit down. Like, nah, because you didn't look good last night. And it's like one of those things where, like, why would you put yourself in that situation? Mm-hmm. So that's why, like, with me, as far as, like, that whole environment went, I was very uncomfortable. I said I was even uncomfortable. And that's when Brent kind of took the hit and was like, okay, we get out here. I was like, okay, when? Because once, once I... See, <laughs> see, now you're starting to sound like me. Because like, once, once I'm into that mindset where like, okay, this ain't funny anymore. This, I'm uncomfortable. Where do we go from here? Like, because... Motherfuckers want to stay there for like mm-hmm. another another hour or two. Mm-hmm. And I'm like, bro, I got to sit here and try to conversate to you about something that I don't even care about. Something that you're just talking to me about. <laughs> like, and then see, like, see, me anywhere else, I'll put up with it and fucking hate it. And just like really not really, not I'm saying I wouldn't want to fuck with them, but I wouldn't want to go out again. If I'm in Des Moines. I think I'm going home. I'll take my chances with whatever the fuck up there and then I got to fight drunkenly or try to avoid drunkenly. I know my way around this motherfucker to where I can get home. Like Exactly. <laughs> I'll try my luck, at least here. But, like, anywhere else, I might sit put and be like, all right, bro, all right, bro. But, as a matter of fact, especially with technology, bro, I'll move my shit home. Right. Like, I'm not staying in there. Fuck that. It's just crazy. I can't hell it. And I can't... I don't know how people go there every Saturday night and be like, yo, the game plan is we're going to go up in here. We're going to drink. <laughs> we're going to drink till we drop. Name. <laughs> Not hear my name. You shout at me from across <laughs> across the bar a hundred times. Me coming to look for you and then saying, hey, let's go do this again across the street at another bar. Man. Why would I do that? Uh-huh. What What's the point in all that? I could drink at home. I got everything that you're looking for in a bar Pretty much on my island right now. <laughs> Pretty much. And Brian will verify that that is true. <laughs> but, um, yeah, getting back to this depression thing. Um, so, as far as depression, man, you just got... It's one of those things that, like I said, is just never really going to go away. It's something that you just got to constantly deal with. You got to constantly keep working on. And um, it's almost like a job without having a job. Sometimes, <laughs> yeah, and it's really, like, my problem was when, like, I was going through the shit that I went through, you know, whether it be, like, friends, family, or significant others, or whatever, like, it's just one of those things where, like, okay, 
I tell you all the situations. What are you going to do about it? There's nothing that you can do about it because it's all in my head. Mm-hmm. What are you going to tell me? Some, what are you going to tell me to do that I haven't already thought of or constructed in my head? Mm-hmm. You know, like who like who's really like 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 what like what can you do t- with a person with depression and and, and anxiety the craziest and stuff like part, that? too, is if yeah, the craziest part is like not my depression. I feel like I don't have a handle on my depression, but I could learn to have a handle on my depression. The craziest part is people. Because I can literally be talking to people and want to have the best for people and things of that nature and just anything with people. And they don't have to give a fine fucking fadoodle bob about me. Right. That shit is crazy. And it, it, it fucks you up because it's like, damn, I just want to be this person that like, uh, I want to help everybody be nice, be cool, be friendly with everybody. And if they don't give a fuck, they don't give a damn, bro. It's, it, there's nothing you could do. Like, that shit will fuck with you and eat at you. And I think that's the hardest part that I'm learning. I'm grasping my depression out. Because it's, like, it's like, I just want this person to care. I want this person to do this, do that, and third. If they don't care, bro, it's over. There's nothing you could do. Like, that shit is wild to me. And that, that shit is just mind-boggling. It's, it's almost how you get people to see it. The now, crazy, oh, the crazy thing, The crazy thing to me, what blows my mind is that Literally, people that I talk to about this will sit there and tell me the stuff that I need to do and tell me the stuff that I may be struggling with and, you know, try to help me out in the most possible way. And I don't, and I don't, you know, I don't shame on that. But at the same time, what you may be trying to tell me to do might not work for everybody. You know, there's different, there's different Not even kinds. that. It's just like, you can't even implement that shit. Even if I, even if I 110% agree with you and I think you're absolutely right and I, like, I, I'm not, not in my hard-headed, stubborn ways and I listen to what the fuck you guys say, it's still gonna take me at least a year or a year and a half. People don't know how long this shit takes to, like, <laughs> actually, like, rebuild and develop into a habit. Mm-hmm. It takes years. People Man, they be like, oh, oh you, months of therapy, you good. What the fuck are you talking about, months of therapy? <laughs> I've seen people in this for like literally 10 years straight. Like my like my uncle has been in therapy for 10 years straight to this day. Still got the same therapist. Still talking about the same concept of therapy. What his what his mess medicine for therapy is. And it couldn't even be that either. It could be the fact that you do that and you work on yourself and you get better and you say you're this cold reversion you're the best nigga you're the best Tyler you could be all that shit then you see oh such and such or you do such and such and go to the same parts that you were before and trigger it just snaps like that and you back to the same bullshit you regress you can feel the growth coming out of you <laughs> it's hard. and that's what and that's what's crazy because I saw some I, I I see a couple things that trigger me yesterday and today where like I could just feel myself regressing and like my blood just began to boil. Mm-hmm. And this is also in the same day that that I saw something uh, like a because I follow a lot of like positivity quote like uh, accounts and stuff like that on social media. And like it was one of those things where it said the shit that triggers you is your master. Yeah. And literally that sticks with me a lot cuz like I want to I want to be so good to the point where I don't I don't want to be triggered by stuff like that and I want to be good to the point where I'm not leading with my ego anymore. That's hard to do too. It's really hard to do cuz you know, for you you only know you. mm mm-hmm. Mhm. So with you trying to rebuild and you trying to be this complete 180 as a person, as a better person, as a more understanding person, more understanding person for others, mm-hmm. how do you know that person? How do you know what you are going to be? I know what I want to be, but I don't know if that's, that might not even be the best thing for me. But how are, you know what, how are you going to know what the finished product is going to be? I know what I like in life. I know from experience. And you know what you know what good and bad is too. And uh, I think it's just like you know, you know, you know who you want to be. It's just doing it. And it's just like if you're not doing the right yeah, things, yeah. Exactly. It's like it's just a matter of doing it. Like, but 
It's the matter of wanting to be that, though. Why wouldn't you want to be that? Some people, it's hard to be that. Some people, it's hard to be get, get out of the mold of leading with their ego. Me being one of them. I don't think it's hard. I think it's like, if you want that, that's what I'm saying. If you want to do that, you know. But it's hard to want to do that is where I'm coming from, though. But how is it hard to want to do that? If if you because if all you know is if right it's now. All you, if it's but if it's already in your mind, no, nah, because you know what you want to be. Like you know you want to like you know you want to help. You know that. what you want to be, but you also know what you are. So you know how much that you have to put into to in order to get to where you want to be. Some people it's hard for them to get to where they want to be because they know the type of things that they have to go through every day on a daily basis. So it's either you go through it or you don't. That's true. And I think, but that's what I'm saying. It's like, you're still going through it. Even if it's in your mind, even if it's, even, even, even if it's in your mind and you're thinking about it, you're still going through the shit because you're thinking about it. You're giving it a thought process. Some shit you don't want to do, some shit you don't want to be, some shit you don't want to see, you're not putting that in your mind. You're not even thinking about it. Some shit you don't care about, Tyler, you're, it's not even touching your fucking brain in any sort of capacity. It's not even touching that little voice in your head. Right. The shit you want and the shit you think about and the shit you speak to existence, you're already thinking about and you're already having that process. So I think the people that say like, oh, I can't be that person because I'm not thinking about the person. No, you're, you're fucking lying. You're thinking about the person now. It's just you think that you're not good enough that the person you are and the person that you know can't be that person. But if it, the person that you are and you know is already thinking about that shit in the first place, then you can't be that person. It's just do you want to put it to work or not? Right. And that's the hardest part is the deciding of putting in the work. It's not just deciding and thinking about it because we all like think about it. We all think killing is bad. So, like, we already know that it's bad, but we already know that we're not putting any effort towards killing because we know it's fucking bad. We don't want that shit. But we all want success and things and friends for our family, so we go hard towards those things. Like, the reason you get up and work every day is because you want a place like this. You want a car like you have. You want the food that you can eat that you like. Right. Because you want that. So is this the same one? This is the hardest part about people is the same point that I had earlier where they like it. But it's moment. almost like, but when you go into that, when you go into that type of mindset, those are things that you need for survival. You need a roof over your head. You need food to eat. You need. I want this, sir. I mean, you do. I, I mean, obviously you do need that stuff, but you don't need that as in you are the provider for that shit. As long as you have someone providing that shit, you don't need that shit. Because think about it, there's a lot of motherfuckers that's freeloading off of people. There's people that we know that get in relationship to relationship to relationship and they freeload off that person because they know that that's what they're comfortable with. So technically, do they need a roof over their head? Yeah, do you need food? Yeah, but are they supplying it? No, they don't get it at all. So it's like, there's plenty of motherfuckers that live that lifestyle. Yeah, that I know a same. handful. I know, I know a couple handfuls. <laughs> 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 Shit, I, I wish I could do that. I feel, I'm doing it with my parents and I feel bad. And like, you know what I mean? Like, I don't even ask them for dinner anymore because of that shit, but. I mean, it's not like they're not going to do it, but at they the same time, me. I mean, they don't feel obligated to do it because you're, you're a grown ass man, you know? Mm -hmm. But at the same time, still a kid. You're still a kid, mm -hmm. you know? Now, what did you mean by personal health when you wrote that down? Because you wrote down mental health. We, thought, we talked about that. We wrote down physical health. What did you mean by personal? Personal health. Personal health, I think I just wrote that down. But, like, I'm going to describe personal health like this as far as, like, um, spiritually and, like, emotionally and stuff like that. Hmm. Like, spiritually, I would say that I'm all right. But also, I believe in, like, a divine spirit where... I also take the good out of it. I got to look at the good and the so look at the so-called good and the so-called bad out of everything, or at least I'm trying to. And that's all you can do. Yeah, I guess so. But um like I said, this shit is hard every day, man. <laughs> that's what this shit is. It's just like rent. <laughs> it's due every day. Do do <laughs> literally do every single day. Depend like as long as you're building towards that thing where you can pay it off, it's all worth it. But you know, I think also kind of to go back to that mental health thing real quick, uh, like uh, all the coaches. It's so weird how like I never like 
in the moment of practice, like all my years of practice, like high school football, little all American, college football, and coaches just be screaming that rhetoric and that bullshit that they be screaming. I'm like, bro, shut the fuck up. I'm just trying not to die. All right. But coach put it in perspective. He said, every day you either get better or you get worse. There's nothing, there's nothing that, you know what I mean? Like, Every day, you're either getting better towards your goal or you're getting worse towards your goal. Like, you choose. Like, you choose what side you pick and stuff like that. It's kind of crazy. It's kind of crazy to think about. Um, is there anything else you want to touch on or say to talk about? I pretty much got my own spiel about my own mental health and not even just my own. Everybody else's mental health out there that's kind of struggling with hard times and, you know, you feel as though, like, you're alone in this. Trust me. Trust and believe. You are fucking alone. But, <laughs> like, that, that, that's definitely... <laughs> that might have been the realest shit you said. You are yeah, fucking alone. You are... <laughs> you're kind of spit. He's <laughs> right. You are fucking alone. And, you know, it's definitely a burden. And it's definitely some shit that you have to go through, man. You know, like, fuck. You have to go through some bad to get to the good. Mm-hmm. I feel like personally. And you know, you just got to take every single, just read every single quote that you can, every single positive quote that you can, and try to put it into your everyday life. And the shit, the time fake it till you make it. Like, if you got to fake it. You literally got to tell yourself all these, all these kind of cliche, dumbass fucking positive quotes that you see online every day, that you see on Tumblr every day, that you see on Twitter every day. You got to be able to actually look at that shit, save it in your phone, put it in your favorites, put it on your wallpaper, on your home screen, whatever the, the case may be. Write it down on a piece of paper, hang it up on your refrigerator, and you got to be able to tell your shit, tell yourself that shit every single day. Even if you think it's just bullshit, even if you think it's just cliche. Well, it's also like, it's also like this. It's, it's like, really a mindset. It's, it's also like this. It's like, you know... If you're hungry, you have to fill yourself up by eating food. So right. if you want to be happy, you have to make yourself happy. Whether that's doing what you like, doing what you love, reading bullshit quotes, you got to trick your mind. Your mind is so powerful that it can literally, your mind is so powerful, it can have you in your room, lights off, TV off, in the darkness, not doing goddamn thing. Or it could have you out in the world, in the fresh air, conquering every fucking thing in sight. So it just really depends on your mindset. Um, any closing statement you want to say to the people? Go. Oh, yeah. Even even with all that um, potentially um, rendering and kind of, like, questionable rhetoric that I just spewed about positivity and quotes and stuff like that. Like I said, man, you just got to be able to look at that shit every day and just believe it. Talking to your mind, you you spend eight hours at work or you spend eight hours at home, no matter what you do. Be able to take that quote that really sticks in your mind and be able to live by it every single day. Every single day until you feel better about the situations. Every single day until you're not triggered by shit that you see on social media or whatever or Whatever the case may be in your everyday life, you got to be able to feel that. And it's got built up to you so much that it's like, you know what? I'm actually going to be all right. I'm actually going to be okay. I'm actually understanding and woke enough to a point where this doesn't affect me as much as I thought it would. Hmm. So anyway, with my clo- anyway, back to my closing statement. Yeah, just... Keep doing that, man. And, you know, if you ever have any type of um, questions or, you know, whatever quotes that you might want to put my way, because I'm always looking for them, because I'm always sad, um, <laughs> then you might want to put those in my Instagram DMs at Tyler the Libra or TTL underscore O2. And, you know, we could talk and conversate about it whatever you want to do and I'll try to care <laughs> you know but at the same time I'm still do- dealing with my shit so I'm only focused on my depression and my health but yeah man I'm always open to ears so um 
Yeah, just to piggyback off what Tyler said, just focus on your mental, like Marshawn Lynch. <laughs> focus on your chicken, your bread, your family, and mind your fucking business. That's it. Healthiest lifestyle to live. Um, I honestly think this is a great episode. I really like this episode. I think we had a lot of good conversations. Uh, be sure to support me on all social medias. Links will be down below. I'm going to upload every episode of the podcast on YouTube this week. So I'm taking a break kind of from my own original YouTube. So hopefully that means more time for me to like relax, rest, and get my mind right because of all the bullshit that I had to go through. Um, is there anything else I want to say? I might leave a donation link. I'm not saying y'all have to donate to the cause, but if you already support the podcast, you already did more than enough, so I'm not going to bother you guys any more than I have to. But what I do say is I want to get new mics, and I want to get this uh, mixer for the podcast so we could upgrade it, get more people on the podcast, do call-ins for the podcast, and just make it a better overall experience for you guys, too, because I think this will probably be the best episode sounding-wise since we've been back. But it could get even better, and I want it to get even better. So, um, I, oh, oh, also, I want to, I want to actually, um, nigga, what? Get your shit off, nigga. You cut <laughs> off. I actually want to. Um, we did this a while back too in the early episodes where it was like a segment where we would ask Tyler. When the fuck did we do that? What did we ask you, nigga? What are you talking? Or anyway, I even if we didn't do it, I kind of want to go through a segment where. I feel like I'm an interesting person enough where people would want to know shit about me or ask me questions or ask any of us questions, honestly. Do you think that, so do you think they will ask questions? I'll probably get like two questions out of everybody else. They probably just won't give a damn. All right. But out of those two people, I'll gladly answer anything that you want. <laughs> but make me. sure you do it the day before the podcast so we can have those questions. Not on some do it right now before the podcast. So if they come in, they come in. If they don't, they don't. So make sure you do that. I'm okay they with come that. Into the next podcast. Nick, you want to save them for the next podcast? Yeah. Why not? Well, whatever then. I'm just saying, make sure you do it before <laughs> the next podcast. That's, that's all I'm saying. Okay. But yeah. Uh, so if you want to donate, get at me, but uh, no crazy amounts, but just anything to help the cause. Cause like the, the, it's the road podcaster mixer, I think. And that shit like $600 and the mics are like 200, but I think it's worth it. I think it's worth the podcast. I'm hoping Tyler can chip in too. So I don't have to pay all this shit by myself, but I mean, he does got a place and he got shit he got to take care of too, but <laughs> Hopefully he still comes through because I, I paid 500 already for the podcast and I'd be 1500 if I'd buy all this shit and that shit would kind of hurt my pockets. I'm not going to lie. Uh, but I love you guys. Hopefully you did enjoy this episode and we are back like we never left.